All right, I'm going to switch gears here and talk about Apple because they are going big, literally, unveiling their largest and most expensive iPhones to date. But surprisingly, the Apple Watch, which now doubles as a heart monitor, might be creating more buzz. Let's bring in Lou Bassanis of Disruptive Tech Research. Lou, good morning. Good morning, Lauren. I want to start with the watch. Listen to what the company's chief operating officer had to say about it. All ECG recordings, their classifications, the noted symptoms, they're all stored right in the health app in a PDF you can share with your doctor. So now your doctor has a detailed picture of your heart rhythm, similar to a lead one ECG that is usually only obtained in the clinic. Is this a game changer, Lou? Because now you have an older demographic that might be brought into the wearable because they can get an EKG and work with their doctors by wearing the watch. And Apple's willing to work with regulators here. Look, I think this is a potential breakout, maybe the surprise of a completely boring event, because this now could move the watch from a nice-to-have to a need-to-have device. Um, I do worry in the early days about false positives. Uh, you know, we're going to have people that might be thinking they're having a heart attack and then have an anxiety attack as a result of that. So uh, those things have to, those things, kinks have to be worked out. But I do believe that this changes the dynamic for the wearable space and for Apple in particular. And the investors saw it coming right away. They, you saw that they responded by selling off shares of Fitbit, which I think is going to end up proving to be a one-hit wonder and gone because of these innovations at Apple with the watch. Yeah, people might get an anxiety attack about the, the price of some of the new iPhones that were released, but there is one cheaper iPhone, the 10R, and um, the, 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 it's $749. And while that's considerably less than the most expensive one at 11 or 1200 um, it's it's the cost of entry at 749 is much higher than it's ever been, $100 higher than it's been at Apple. What does that mean to you? Is that good for shareholders? Yep. I think it's great for shareholders. I mean, I think there's many reasons to be bullish, and the biggest one is that there's bigger screens and bigger prices. So we're going to see right now the stage is set for the highest average sales price per device with strong demand. That's going to drive record revenues on the hardware size side. And then on the software side, uh, bigger screens drive more app usage, which leads to more services revenue for Apple. So I think we're going to see great hardware sales, record, uh, record increases in services. And then with the Apple Watch, that becomes the, the variable for a potential breakout. So is, I think it's a great news for investors. You kind of call the event boring, uh, but <laughs> was a boring event yesterday in the new iPhones and the Watch Series 4. Is that enough to make investors dismiss trade concerns? Because Apple is worried about a potential trade war with China. Look, I think that the trade wars and the tariffs concerns overhanging Apple are much ado about nothing. The tariffs do not impact the iPhone one iota. I think uh, President Trump is going to convincingly win these trade wars, and we're going to look back six months from now and realize it had absolutely no impact on Apple. So, look, my dad taught me long ago, boring businesses, don't be fooled. They can make a ton of money, and I think Apple is poised to do just that. Lou Bassanis, you are not boring. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, Lauren. <laughs>